On today's episode, we're going to talk about LS lifters. Are there different ones? What are the differences? And do LS7 lifters actually exist? Stay tuned. So from left to right, this is an actual takeout LS7 lifter. This is what you buy all over the internet if you buy a GM quote unquote LS7 lifter. This is a what you buy if you go to the dealer or on the internet and buy a, just a regular LS53 replacement lifter. This is a real LS1. It took me a while to find some, but this is a real LS1, and this is also the same lifter that was in, oh, uh, like you Vortec, small block Chevrolet 5.7s, and then this is our house brand. <clears throat> so if you, let's see, zoom on in. So if you look at all of the components, Every one of them are identical except for this LS1 lifter. And I'm going to, so the way they done back in the day, let's see, can you see, yeah. So, so you got the, the pin, we call it a piston, the piston with the check valve and it sits on this push rod cup like this. And then we can see oil grooves to let the oil out and the oil comes up beside it and inside the body. I don't, can you see that? Anyway, inside the body, there is a groove that intersects with the cup oil hole that pushes it up to the push rod. So that's how they done it in the LS1, and then obviously, I'm gonna just grab. I mean, they all the same, but if you look at if you look at the the bearing area, you know, we definitely on the newer style lifter we have more more support, more bearing area to, to carry the load. So definitely, the new design is is a much better design. But other than the the valving and you know more material in the bore there, there's really no no massive difference one thing that is different which again doesn't matter is the orientation of the oil hole but it's getting all 360 degrees so where the oil holes at doesn't make any difference anyway so that's that's that now the ls7 the real LS7, and like I say, this is just a, a takeout, and, and we've been saving it for this video. Um, I mean, there's just no difference. The LS7 and the non-LS7, I mean, if you put them side by side, that they're, I mean, it's the same lifter. It's the exact same lifter. It was made at the same place on the same machine. The internal bore is the same. The let me get it rolled around. The piston assembly is the same, the same check valve. The way these work versus the LS1 is this is the push rod cup, and this is a metering disc. And I don't know, yeah, you can see that. So, so this is radius, and that ceiling disc sits on there, and so it sits in the piston, and it's got a counter bore in the piston for that to sit in. And so that's how it oils the push rod with that metering disc. So oil is entering the hole here, <clears throat> and that goes up to the push rod and down into the chamber in the bottom and it's got a return spring, you know, and that's how, you know, it's, it's, it's squishy 
till you get them adjusted and they pump up, that's what returns the piston to zero lash. And this is what maintains zero lash every cycle when that lifter bleeds and then the chamber fills again and that spring keeps zero lash on the push rod. So in retrospect, let's go over here to, so this is, uh, can you, so I'm gonna take the original, this is the original LS, yeah, here we go. This is the original LS7 and this is our house brand. And again, I mean, they're identical. The way it works, the way it's made, it's, it's absolutely identical. So th this whole um, internet fantasy of LS7 lifters, it just doesn't exist. There is no LS7 lifter. They're all the same lifter. After this, when they went from this design to this design, they're all the same. Now, you know, at some point, and we've reached out to Delphi, and we've talked, we've got some emails from Delphi, and they wouldn't really forthcoming with any, any information. I mean, basically, they're just making it to a print. I can't find any tolerance differences. I can't, I mean, there's nothing. It's the, it's the same lifter. Now, one thing that I've seen a bunch of, and I'm gonna pop all these lifters back together. We're gonna stop the video and we'll pop them all back together. And we're actually gonna measure from the wheel to the spring cup with a height gauge because for some reason, the internet, especially the, uh, the welfare LS crowd believes the LS7 lifter is 50 thousandths taller than all other lifters. And, and that's pure fantasy. And, and I know why that is, but we're gonna, we're gonna go over that too. But let me pop these things back together and then we're gonna set up the height gauge and then I'm gonna show you they all the same height. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got my height gauge and we got all the lifters and I got me a probe here made out of old push rod and that way we can go right into the cup of the lifter and then we're just going to start and work our way through them and we're going to zero the indicator on the LS7 and then we're going to measure every one of these and see what the what the difference in. Obviously we're going to have some difference, a couple of few thousands, but we're not going to have a difference that's substantial. So the first one, the LS7, is going to be our standard. So we'll put it in the V block and this way we just, we just know we got it held square to the table. And then we'll put our dude in. Let me, let me turn it where the camera can see it. All right, so we're gonna zero it. So that's zero. All right, so that's our standard. And then this is the the aftermarket, or it's still a GM, but it's what you would buy online from, from all the, the resellers as a LS7. So that's four thousandths. I think that one after I fooled with it was like two. So, I mean, that, that's, that we the same. And then this is a standard 5.3 replacement lifter from GM. And that's four thousandths. And this is the early LS1.
So the early LS lifter is actually 30 thousandths shorter. Now, I don't know if that is, no, it's up against it. It's up against the snap ring. Hmm. I wish I had another one to check, just for giggles. And then this is our standard lifter that we sell, this aftermarket and that's four thousandths. So every one of these lifters except that LS1 is exactly the same length. So LS7 lifters are not different but I, I do have some more. I'm gonna grab another one of these and I'm gonna just check it to verify so this one's still all nice and greasy. Yep, and that was 36, and this one was 33. So, so for sure, in the early the early LS1s and then this lifter was in the early 5.3s. Um, that's crazy, but they are shorter, 30,000 shorter. And again, 30 is not a, not a major deal, but I don't know why the internet, and, and maybe somebody seen this at some point, and that's where the rumor started, but there's a video on YouTube that I seen and a guy's trying to measure all these lifters with uh, Harbor Freight calipers and he comes up with a five thousandths difference but he can't read the calipers and he calls it a fifty thousandths difference and so that's where a, a lot of people get that fifty number and then <clears throat> another thing is if you've seen it apart let me pop one apart again. So, when people talk about preload, you see that good? Mm -hmm. Yep. When people are talking about preload, you know, obviously we're talking about how far is this plunger down? So zero preload would be the spring cup is touching the lock ring. So that's a scenario we don't want. But we also don't want so much preload that we got the plunger, you know, I, I hear it all the time, well, we need a hundred thousandths preload or whatever but that's that's crazy the only thing that you need to do is move that plunger I don't know if you can see it you need to move that plunger far enough off of that snap ring to where it can run through its thermal cycle so when an engine is cold everything is is um, you know, you're not going to have any lash. If it was a solid deal, you would have no lash cold and a bunch of lash hot. So you need enough preload and, and most, even all aluminum motors are only going to grow, I don't know, 15-ish at the most. So if you've got what we tell people 30 to 60, because <clears throat> push rods are in 25 thousandths increments. So if you've got a hundred thousandths preload and you got this plunger way down there like that, if anything ever happens and you float a valve, that lifter is going to pump up just like that. And the next cycle around, your valve is going to be open an extra whatever preload you have. So if you got a hundred thousandths preload, your valve is hanging open an extra hundred thousandths. And, and that's not a problem at 600 lift, but it's a problem coming off the seat because that's when it hits the pistons. So 
That's why we tell people there it's silly to run more preload than is required to do the job because it's not advantageous. And, and a lot of people are trying to run, you know, the lifter, especially like hydraulic stuff, flat tappet stuff, they'll try to run the plunger all the way to the bottom and, and make it be like a solid. And I mean, that's cool in a lot of instances, but you know, this stuff, the way it is now, you just don't really have to do that and there's no advantage. And if your lifter has a bleed down rate that this that excessive, then you just need another lifter if you're trying to overcome the plunger bleeding down. So, you know, just all that preload is just not your friend. But anyway, but like I say, I can't see a difference in any of the standard second design lifters. They're all the same. Everybody's aftermarket. I've got some uh, morales in stock. I've took them apart. The internals in them look identical to every lifter here. There's no difference. And as far as I know, nobody is making a lifter like that anymore. Um, this got that type of valving. Everybody's lifter has the, the new type valving the way it uh, oils the push rod. But like I say, I was really surprised because I, I didn't measure this stuff before doing the video. So I was really surprised to see these early ones are 30 short. And because I was always told all of them are the same height, t interchangeable, small block, LS, they're all the same. And this would have been the same lifter that would have been in a roller, you know, 87 up roller motor small block. So that's a... Uh, that, that's a little different, but like I say, from probably 90, I guess this happened in 99 or 2000. So 2000 up for sure is this system, and it's been this all the way to today. So, you know, there's no, there's no cup height difference. And if there is a such a thing as a LS7 lifter, we haven't found it because this is a real one that's a takeout. And this is just a standard lifter. And Delphi told me uh, in an email that they have one part number that they make and it's sold under about seven or eight different part numbers. So whether you buy any of this, you get the same lifter, it's just a different part number. So I hope that helps. Uh, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.